Hello beautiful people, Richard here and I'm going to be showing you uh, an updated version of the Gold Paladin Premium Deck Profile. So this is post uh, Miyagi Booster set. So uh, there's going to be some slight differences but not too many big changes. But uh, this is basically what I'm playing with right now for Premium Format. I do get a couple of games of Premium in with a couple friends here at school. So this is just kind of the result based on all that play testing. So let's get started. The starter is still going to be Crimson Lion Cub Kirif, the uh, BTO5 one, or yeah, BTO6, sorry, BTO6 one. Uh, Forerunner, when another gold pattern rides, you move this to rear guard circle. And then the skill is you choose Kirif and Gareth on the rear. And if you have Bowmans as your vanguard, you move Kirif and Gareth to Soul and you superior ride Blondezel from your deck, and then you do that by going first and winning. So yeah. Run Kirif to win games. So next we're running three copies of Incandescent Lion Blondezel. So this, we're only running three copies because once you do the superior ride, uh, the card really doesn't do much. So it's kind of, it's just the superior ride target. Excuse me. I ate mac and cheese earlier. <laughs> it's coming up the wrong end. That was kind of gross. Anyways, uh, Blondezel's skill. Uh, the first one's not really important. It's if you have Bowmanes and Gareth in your rear guard circle, you Soul Blast a Cure from your Soul and you ride it as Stand, and your Vanguard, if your opponent's Vanguard is grade 2 or less, this gets Drive minus 1. You could theoretically use this, um, but you're pretty much never going to during the game, like ever, because there's way better things you can be doing. The other skill is when it's on the Vanguard Circle and it attacks, you can call a card from your hand of Vanguard Circle. So that's pretty good because you you can proc off the effect of Dindrain or um, Bowman's when you call it from your hand. So that's pretty cool. So when you swing with your van when you're already you know riding grade three, where your opponent's at grade one, you can call Dindrain, and then you can get its effect off to draw a card if you want. So three blonde Ezel. Come on, get out of there. All right. Next up for the Greed 3s, I'm running two copies of Raven Hair Dazzle. I decided to run two of Raven. Uh, it is a new card, so I just wanted to show off a new card. And when I've been using it, I really do like the crit uh, guard restrict skill that it has. So I do like that for the Sentinel guards and forcing my opponent to drop a lot of hand. And I do like the other skill early game as well. So if I Sapir ride Blonde Ezel and I have two Counter Blasts open, I can use the first Counter Blast to superior write it from hand, and then the second one for the skill. So the first skill is act, hand. If your vanguard is blonde Ezel, you can counter blast one and ride this uh, card as stand. So it lets you basically ride twice in a turn. And then the other skill is when it attacks, uh, if you have blonde Ezel in your soul, you counter blast one, and until the end of the battle, this gets 15k, a crit, and your opponent cannot guard with sentinels from their hand. So. You know, your opponent's at grade one, you already want to swing for 27k with an extra crit, and they can't guard with sentinels, you know, you're already off to a great start with that extra crit. So, that's pretty cool. It's also a pretty decent finisher. Um, if I want my opponent to have to take a pretty big hit, the 8k booster, it's 35 with an extra crit. And if I know they have really low hand, I pretty much will probably go into this instead of stick with this instead of striding. So that's happened, I'd say once, but, you know, Versatility in, in premium is still pretty cool. And lastly, for the grade threes, this is probably the most important one in the whole deck, is four copies of Battlefield Storm Sagamore. The reason why you want to run four copies of this is because it is a good ride target after you're finished with a superior ride. It's good on the rear guard circle, and it's just giving you like more resources. So the ways I use this card a lot is by just riding it, getting another gift, and then uh, before you get to, before you stride, you can use its effect. So you place it, soul last one, draw a card, and you get to call something. So you're setting up for Unite a little bit. Uh, you get to draw a card, so it helps you decide, you know, fill up your hand a little more better since you got to meet the requirements for Unite. And um, what else? If I'm going into Ultima uh, and I ride this first, and then I use its skill, Soul Blast 1, call stuff, and I can set up my board, and then I discard another Sagramore to pay the cost, and then I use Ultima skill to fill up my board more. 
So kind of like how if I go straight into Ultima, I have to stick with the board I got because you want to keep the triggers on top of your deck. But if you use Sagramore first, you can kind of fix up your field a bit and then go into Ultima and make your field bigger. So I like Sagramore a lot in this deck. So definitely run in four copies. Uh, I didn't read Sagramore's skill. It's when it's placed from hand, so less one, draw a card. Uh, then call a card from your hand to Rayguard Circle. All right, grade twos. So this is the most important grade two in the whole deck. It's uh, Knight of Superior Skills Bowman's, or Bowman. So we're running four copies of Bowman because that's how you win the game. You get this card in your opening hand, go first, and you win. That's how this deck works. You want this card in your hand. So the skill, that was my phone, um, the skill of Bowman's is, Bowman is Banner Rearguard Circle when placed from hand. You discard a card from your hand, search your deck for Gareth, call to rear, and shuffle your deck. So because Kirif, you know, basically requires Bowman's on van and Gareth on rear, just with Bowman's alone, you already meet the requirements for the superior right, so that's why you want to grab that card in your opening hand. So if your opening hand doesn't have Bowman, Mulligan 5. Redraw the whole hand until you see Bowman. If you have to G-assist into the grade 1, it doesn't matter because, you know, you got Helios and Twin Drive and you're going to make up your hand one way or another, but you want the superior ride and you want to be on grade 3 uh, early. So, oh, and Bowman's other skill before I move on is uh, when he's placed by card ability, uh, he gets 3k. So, he becomes a 12k beater if you call him from Sagamore or Henry Knees or whatever superior call skill you have, and if you call it, um, you know, from hand, who's second where it still sets up and gets that nice power up, so that's pretty cool. Next up for Greed 2s, I'm running three copies of Flame Wind Lion Wonder Ezel, the old one. So I'm still sticking with this, because since we're running five Ezels and two of them are two different types, uh, it helps me to, you know, search out Raven Hair easier. So if I don't have Raven Hair in hand, but I do have Wonder Ezel, and I do this peer ride, uh, I can call Wonder Ezel and then use it to search out Raven. And then because I'm still riding, Raven gets five uh, gets the uh, the gift. And on top of that, it gives Raven an additional five k. So it makes the guard restrict a little bigger. So that's still nice. So Wonder Ezel's skill is when it's placed on Rear Guard Circle, if you have a Vanguard with Ezel in its name. Uh, if you have a grade 3 Vanguard with Ezel in its name uh, that's standing, you search your deck for up to a card with Ezel in its name, write it as stand, and then you shuffle your deck, and the unit that was ridden gets 5k. So it's mostly there for um, to get into Raven here, and it's also kind of there if your opponent is counterblast denying you and you can't stride. There's still some options you can do messing around with this, and early game is just really good. You just call it out. You know, you're making more circles, and your opponent, you're giving yourself guard, you're giving yourself Raven Hair, which has guard restrict. So, lots of aggressiveness with this deck. So, I'm running three Wonder Ezel in response. So, next up, because we want to fill up a board really easily, I'm running three copies of Knight of the Remaining Sun, Henrynes. So, Henrynes' skill is Generation Break 1. Uh, so, it's the only card in the deck that has Generation Break, uh, other than the G-Zone. So, Generation Break 1. Uh, uh, you kind of blast one, soul blast one. When this is placed onto the rear guard circle, you pay the cost. If you do, you look at three cards from the top of your deck, search for one, call it. The rest go to the bottom of your deck. And then, if you have a vanguard with Gurgit in its name, uh, this unit and the unit you called gain 3k. So we do run Gurgit G units. So this is so the 3k will happen. And because the effect of uh, hammer knees works when it's called from the deck or from hand it helps you fill up the board really well and you have plenty of soul and plenty of counterblast to work with so the card is really good so instead of running four hammer knees i decided to uh four enemies and four wonder as well, i decided to run two more uh vivians so vivian is basically a worse hammer knees so to speak but it's still not terrible it's when it's placed from hand so that's that's the bad part when it's placed from hand you can blast one, soul blast one. You look at top three, pick one from among them, the rest go to the bottom of the deck, and until the end, or pick one of the three, call it, the rest go to bottom, and then Vivian gains 3k for the turn. Uh, I'm still running Vivian because it's kind of like um, Wonder Ezel in a way, where if you 
did your superior ride and then you call Vivian and then you can call something to the Excel circle. It helps with the aggressiveness in the early game to help with the rush. And if you have Vivian in hand and you want to set up Unite uh, with Riding Sagamore, that's something you can do as well. So I still like the card. Um, I'm still testing out if I do feel like I might drop this down to one and then put Henry's up to four. But for now, I'm, I'm sticking with the two Vivian because I've been liking it. All right, so that was it for grade twos. Onto the grade ones, I'm running three copies of Gareth. So Knight of Elegant Skills Gareth. Garrett's skill is when it's placed by a card ability, you counterblast one and it gets 10k. So this is really good for when you're putting it behind Raven Hair and you want to have an extra 10k to that boost for that guard restrict, it's there for that. It's still a good 18k beat stick and it's 28 if you have an Excel circle. But most importantly, it is there, of course, for the cure of skill. So you ride Bowman's, you pull out Gareth, and then you do the superior ride. I'm only running three copies because... After a while, Gareth kind of becomes dead since you have to call it by a card ability. So it just sits in your hand. Uh, you only use the first one for the superior ride for the most part. So the other two copies are like if I really want to search them out with Bowman's to deck thin and have more triggers left in the deck. So I'm pretty comfortable with three. Uh, you could drop it down to two as well, but two is kind of cutting it if you, you know, have one in hand and then you... Um, or, you know, if you have Bowman's hand, I guess it doesn't matter. But if you lose both somehow, uh, then you can't do the superior ride. That's going to really suck. So three is, like, just in case. But I feel like four is kind of overkill a little bit because, you know, you only need it for the superior ride. So next up, uh, one copy of Haugen. Uh, because I'm not running for Gareth, I'm just running uh, one extra copy of Haugen. So Haugen's skill is Vanner Rear. When your Vanguard's attack hits, you look at the top card of your deck, and you may call it. And you may call it only if it's a grade less than or equal to to your Vanguard. And if you do call it, uh, you choose one. You have to choose an evil slain uh, Swordsman Haugen, so a copy of itself on rear, and retire it. So uh, if this is on your Vanguard circle, you don't have to retire the Haugen unless you have a Haugen on your rear. But if this is in your van and you have no Haugen rear guards, you can swing with this. You check top, and if it's a grade one, you're like, oh, cool, check top. Oh, it's Gareth, cool, call Gareth. You don't have to retire anything because... You're still meeting the requirements of Haugen, which is uh, the Vanguard's attack hit. You look at the top card, saying great or less, then call it. And then you finish the skill by retiring Haugen after you call. So if you don't have Haugen to retire, you don't have to, you don't retire anything, but you still get to keep the called unit. So I like it as a Vanguard, you know, first ride. Um, I'd run more copies, but the deck's kind of tight on space. But it's still good on the rear guard circle as well if you have this on an Excel and you swing with this first. And then you have your Vanguard swing, and if your Vanguard attack hits, you can look at the top card, you know, call the thing, and then call it on top of this, and this gets retired automatically. And it's also good because if your Vanguard's attack hits, you check the top card and it's a trigger, you can keep the trigger on top of your deck. So you can, you can know what card is coming, you can know what trigger is showing up, uh, because it says you may call it, which means it just goes back on top of your deck. So I really like Haugen a lot. Um, kind of sad I only have to run one copy, but uh, it's still pretty decent. So I'd rather keep the rest of my lineup instead of trying to make room for more Haugens. So we're running four copies of Dindrain. So reason for four Dindrain is because countercharging is a thing. So you know a lot of stuff counter blasts, and you want to be able to countercharge. But uh, if you don't have to countercharge, you can also draw. So Dindrain's skill is when it's placed by a card ability. You Soul Blast 1, you pick one of two abilities. You either draw a card or counter charge. And if you counter charge, you gain 3k. So for the people that can't see clearly, there it is. It says when placed by a card ability, Soul Blast 1 and you Soul Blast 1 and, and it says red text draw. And then it goes back to black or counter charge. And then red text and then this unit gains 3k. So the draw and the this unit gains 3k are separated by the or in the red text. So they're two separate skills. So the counter charge and the draw are two separate red texts, meaning they're two separate skills, meaning you don't get the 3k if you draw. Just just gotta remind people about that, you know. So for Dindrain, if you have something to counter charge, you're gonna counter charge. If you don't, you draw. So it's still a really good card, and I want to run four copies of it. So, 
and you have plenty of soul. This deck has plenty of soul thanks to Cure. And lastly, for grade ones, we're running four copies of Gorbaduck, Stride Fodder. So Gorbaduck, you know, when you place it from hand, reveal a grade three, uh, search for Ger search for Gurgit grade three, then discard a card. You know, we don't run Gurgit, so it doesn't matter. Other skills, hand. Uh, when you're paying the cost for Stride, this gets grade plus two, so it allows you to pay the cost for Stride a lot easier, and you can move on with your day. So four stride fodder because, you know, we're, we're superior writing grade threes from the deck and rewriting them over, so you want to be able to make, guarantee you can still stride. On to the triggers. Uh, running four copies of Halo Shield Mark. In the other deck profile I had, I wasn't running draw PGs. Uh, this one I am. I'm going back to the draw PGs just to test it out and see how I like them. I still really do like PGs in the deck, so because uh, the deck has kind of slowed down since Mock Slash isn't in the deck, so... I still feel like this deck could use the PGs, so I'm running them. So, yeah, draw trigger PG, Sentinel. Um, you can only run four Sentinels, and when it's placed on the Guardian Circle, you discard a card from your hand, and the unit that's being attacked cannot be hit till the end of the battle. PGs are good, especially when they're draw triggers. So for my trigger lineup, uh, I kind of tested out, like, kind of playing around with, like, some stuff. So I'm only running... Five crits, so, you know, and mix it up however you want. So I'm doing three Flame of Victory and four Shinak. And I know that you can run... I was running eight crits before, and I was having a lot of fun with that. Because, you know, you have Quad Drive, and then you have um, Raven Hair Gains of crits. So if you Drive Check more crits with that, you're basically guaranteeing more damage earlier. Um, but I'm, I'm playing around with fronts, because there are some moments where I'm like, man, if I had front triggers, my board would be awesome right now. So... You know, because I'm running five crits, I'm also going to run three front triggers. So I'm running three copies of Donticle. This is still being tested out, but I'm still I'm having fun with, with the three fronts. Because for the most part, when I'm quad driving, you know, you see a lot more different triggers more often. So if I see a front, the one front is good. And then after that, if I see crits, that's helping with units have more pressure. But the, the fronts really do make a difference for when you're being offensive. So, but the crits help you win games. So I'm still kind of mixed up on what I want to do. But I know I do want to run crits because, you know, quad drive is a thing. So I'm still testing around with the three fronts and I'm liking it. So that's what I'm doing. And then last but not least, four heal triggers. So four Elixir Sommelier. Uh, not running uh, the Liberator Rabbit because we have Counter Charge with Dindrain and the deck doesn't Counter Blast super a lot either. Um, Soul is fine as well, so there's no reason to Soul Charge. And I just want that 10k power from the trigger. Uh, and you also want, you know, G Guardian fodder, so heal triggers. So four copies of Elixir Sommelier. So that was it for the main deck. Onto the G zone, we're running four copies of Master Swordsman of First Light, Kurgit Helios. So Helios' skill is act once per turn, uh, unite, so you have to call two or more units during the turn to activate. You flip a copy of this face up from your G zone, it gets drive plus one. So it's super free, super easy to get off. This is basically your first stride every game. And then the other skill is Generation Break 3, so if you have three or more face-up G units on your van or face-up in G-Zone, you this gets uh, 5k for each of your rear guards, and your opponent can't guard with grade 1 or higher units from their hand to the end of the turn. A lot of decks run grade 0 PGs now, so it doesn't really affect that. The power is still good, though, in case they don't have a perfect guard. Um, and some decks might actually run grade 1 PGs, like Luard and Alfred, you know, running Lien and Ezras instead of uh, draw trigger PGs. So that could come in handy as well if you know, you know, your opponent's running those. Um, but you're basically going to be going into this back-to-back, uh, -back, so going into this, the first stride and also the second stride, because, you know, you got all these, all these triggers that you want to be getting off with all that quad drive. So run for Helios. It's really good. So next up, we're running two copies of Holy Sword of Heavenly Law Gurgit. So Holy Sword of Heavenly Law is getting reprinted in the upcoming Revival Collection booster, along with Gorbaduck, if you don't have either of these. So Heavenly Law's skill is act once per turn. You counterblast one, and you choose a copy of this 
face down from G-Zone, turn face up, and discard a card from your hand, and it gets auto red text. When this attacks, you have to be in Unite. When this attacks, you get to look at the top seven, choose one from among them and call it to a rear guard circle. The rest gets shuffled back into your deck. And then it also gets a second skill, which is continuous. Um, all of your rear guards gain 2k for each of your face-up gurgits in your G-Zone. So counting you know, your heavenly law for the skill, and then also your other gurgits that you're running throughout the game. So you can potentially give your rear guards between 6 to 10k for, this, for that skill. So it's really good when all your rear guards are getting that power, especially when you have extra Excel markers for you to work with. So I'm only running two of Henley Law because it's basically a finisher for the most part. You don't really want to go into it more than the one time. The game will probably go on too long before you can use it a second second time. Uh, two copies of Glorious Reigning Drag Golden Dragon, Glorious Reigning Dragon. Sorry, you gotta give the full name there. Uh, his skill is Unite. When this attacks, you choose a copy of this face down, turn it face up, counter boss one. And you choose two of your rear guards and you put them on the bottom of your deck. And when it attacks, you do that. You look at the top seven and you pick up from those seven uh, equal to the number of face up cards in your G zone and call them to rear guard circles. And if you call three or more cards, you can counter charge and soul charge. So you get the counter charge to repay the counter blast, you're gaining soul, and you get a whole new field and you have Excel markers. So all that, that power is going to get boosted way higher and you know he's just multi-attacking you know as Nikki Golan once said there's never a time when Glorious Reigning is not value so it's a really good card so definitely two I don't think I'd run more than this because you're going to be going into Helios so much for the quad drive and then you're basically going into your finishers which is either going to be Glorious Reigning, Heavenly Law or um, you know Ultima any of those uh, next up, because we are running an Ezel deck, we're running two copies of Absolution Lion King Mithra Ezel. So Mithra Ezel's skill is act once per turn. You count on blast one and choose a copy of this face down, turn it face up, and all of your rear guards get unlocked. And then you look at the top five, choose one from among the five, call it to rear, and then the unit you called along, uh, along with your vanguard gain power equal to the base power of the unit. So, you know, your goal is basically to kind of like look at top five, find a great three, and then you go, okay, call, plus 12, plus 12. So that's one way to do it. Um, you're not going to run into a lot of Link Joker decks in premium as of right now. I don't, you know, maybe when Deleter support comes out, you might have run into a Messiah deck or two that might lock your board. Or you might play against like some spooky surprise Chaos Breaker deck. But you know what? Having the ability to unlock rear guards is cool. So might as well abuse it. Um, other than that, you basically never really go into this unless you cannot get off Unite at all. And you like have one card in hand and you use it for stride, you can just go into Mithrazel and then you get a rear guard. And then, you know, kind of work from there. So mostly attack. Um, don't really go into it that often, but it's still a really good card. And it's Ezel. So next up, Generation Break 8, Celtis winner. So uh, potentially your finisher. So it's uh, GB8, so face up, van, or G zone, eight cards. You have to be in Unite. Uh, when this attacks, you choose four of your rear guards and they gain a red text ability, which is when this unit attacks or boosts, or at the end of the battle that it attacks or boosts, you look at the top two cards, pick one from among those two, call it, and then the unit called gains 5k, and then the other unit that from the top two gets put to the bottom. So you basically go into this. You give your units, maybe and your Excel units, the ability, four of them, the ability to do that thing. And then when they attack, you look at the top two and you call it to an Excel circle. And then you use another card, you swing, look at the top two, call it to an Excel circle. So you can abuse the same Excel circle over and over again. You can use multiple Excel circles, so you can give you know units that are already on them that ability. I feel like it's still a really good finish, the finisher. The only other option you can run for this would probably be Radiant Sword Gurgit. I just feel like I have a tough time running Radiant Sword because it's so specific in like its conditions with how you're going to use it. Because I feel like you're not going to use it with just the, the one Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 2. I feel like you're going to be doing like Counter Blast 2, Soul Blast 4, give all, you know, give five of your rear guards 10k. But that's, you know, and then the Vanguard games like 50k, you know, basically. 
But other than that, like I just feel like that big beefy rear guard or big beefy vanguard number isn't really going to do a whole lot. While Celtus Winter gives you multi attacking and could help you finish the game that way as well. And if you run front triggers, you know that helps as well. So it's kind of kind of up to you. You can either do Celtus Winter or Radiant Sword. I just prefer Celtus Winter. And lastly, uh, Zenith Peak Ultima. This card is so fun in this deck because of just Excel circles. Um, so it's kind of blast to when it's. Well, first, I'll explain its cost, which is Ultimate Stride. You have to have uh, three face-up cards in your G-Zone, and you have to discard a card with the same name as your Vanguard. And if this unit returns back to the G-Zone, you remove your G-Zone from the game, for the rest of the game. So, you know, it's, you go into this, you gotta win. Um, the, other, the main skill is when it's placed, you kind of blast two, and you look at, look at your deck for four cards. Two of them get called to the rear guard circle, and the other two get put on top of your deck. So after your opponent, after you shuffle and your opponent cuts, put the last two on top of your deck. And then for the rest of the turn, um, when you trigger, when you get a trigger in your drive check, um, you choose all of your units for the chosen card effects. So if you get a crit, you choose all of your units. Um, from memory, that from memory, if I chose to put a front trigger, or if I choose to get a front trigger. I don't get to give 10k to all my rear guards. The 10k is still just applied to the front row because front triggers don't allow you to choose your targets. The trigger is automatically assigned. And it says in the card text for Ultima that um, when you, ch you choose all your rear guards for tri trigger attacks, and it's like, since you're not really choosing for fronts, uh, the effect really wouldn't apply. I might be wrong with that. If it is just 10k to everything, sure. But for the most part, you're going to be putting two crits on top of your deck anyways, because that's just way better. So, you know, you go into, if your opponent's at three damage and you really got nothing else to do, you just plop down Ultima, you know, you make a board and you got your extra rear guard, Excel circles, and then you swing with Ultima, and then every trigger basically gives all your units plus 20k guaranteed because of the two triggers you put on top of your deck. And if you get a third trigger, that's even better. And then your rear guard columns on the side here, they just get huge. So it's going to destroy your opponent's hand even if you even if you don't win that turn. So it's just a really, really good card. And it's also getting reprinted in the upcoming Revival set. So you guys are going to get an easier chance to pick up your Ultimas. So lastly, for G Guardians, I'm running three copies of Slamy Flare. I'm not running Rhea just because um, I like Slamy Flare's shield increase a lot better. It's more situational. And then my other G Guardian, I'm running one copy of Elise. So Slimy Flare's skill is when it's placed on the guard circle. You choose one of your rear guards, put it on the bottom of your deck, and then you look at the top five, and you call two from among those five with different grades to the guardian circle. And since grade ones and triggers have that shield increase, you're going to have way more shield to work with than we had before. So that's pretty nice. So Slimy Flare essentially got a power boost from premium. And sorry, I'm grabbing my phone. It's on the floor. Um... So Slimy Flare is really good, so increased shield. Ray is also pretty good. Ray is getting reprinted in the Revival Collection. Um, I just don't like Rhea too much because it's it's guard skills kind of like RNG, it's like super random. So the skill is Generation Break 1, kind of plus 1. Choose a G Guardian from your G zone, turn it face up. When this is placed, you look at the top two cards of your deck, and you pick one from among them, the other one goes to the bottom, and you call the one you pick to the Guardian Circle, and that unit gets uh, auto guardian circle uh, when the when your opponent's attack doesn't hit. So when the guard's successful, you move it to rear guard circle. So it helps you fill your board. Uh, yeah, which is nice because you know we don't have Gurgit, you know, filling our board anymore. So you can go into Rhea. I just don't. If I'm going into Rhea, it's going to be because the shield is super, you know, easily guardable, uh, and I don't usually like to go into it more than once. But I usually like to save my G-Guardians for attacks that are really big and really hard to guard. So that's why I like Slamy Flare, because it has the bigger shield. But um, I just don't like Rhea because, you know, if I look at the top two and, like, one's a grade three and one's a grade two and I need at least a 10k shield, you know, I feel like I kind of wasted it when I could have just gone with Slamy Flare and had way better options going through the top five instead of the top two. 
But Raya is still good. Raya is also getting reprinted in Re Revival collections. You can pick those up as well. And it's coming in full art, like all the other cards. So, you know, I might pick up a full art Elise. So that is it for the Ezel Premium deck profile. Wow, that was really long. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys have your own Ezel decks that you guys like, share, share your thoughts and what you guys like to do. And that's basically it. I'm Richard, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.